Somewhere Europe has to grow out of the mindset that Europe's problems are the world's problems. But the world's problems are not Europe's problems. That it's if it is you, it's yours. If it is me, it's ours. I don't see a non-alignment oil connection at all. I mean, today Europe is buying oil. Europe is buying gas. Uh, I just read the new lot of the new package uh, of sanctions. Now the package is designed in a way in which consideration has been given to the welfare of the population. So you know, uh, pipelines have a certain carve out. Uh, so and timelines have been given. It's not like tomorrow morning everything is going to be cut off. So. People need to understand if you can be considerate of yourself, surely you can be considerate of other people. So, if a Europe says, uh, "Look, uh, we have to manage it in a way in which its impact on my economy is not traumatic," uh, uh, that that freedom or that choice should exist for other people as well. Look, uh, I, I mean, I don't want to sound argumentative, but then. Tell me, if buying Russian gas is not funding the war? I mean, why is it, it's only Indian money and uh, oil coming to India which funds, but it's not gas coming to Europe which funds? I mean, look somewhere. I mean, let's let's be a little even-handed out here. And even this, you know, look the whole narrative that it's gone up nine times. I mean, it's gone up nine times from a very low base, and it was a very low base because at that time the markets were more open. You know. Why? Why? If if uh, countries in Europe and the West and the United States are so concerned, why don't they allow Iranian oil to come into the market? Why don't they allow Venezuelan oil to come into the market? I mean, they've squeezed every other source of oil we have, and then say, "Okay, guys, you must not go into the market and guess the best deal for your people." I don't think that's a very fair approach. You don't understand in the West, uh, but uh, it it isn't just the West, okay? I don't think people understand because they're not actually tracking the trade. We have we have been exporting wheat. Okay. Uh, typically, we export about two to three million tons. Last year, last financial year was a better year. Uh, we exported about seven million tons. Uh, this year, before the heat wave hit us very badly, uh, the expectation was that we would do substantial exports, and we were open. I mean, in fact, Prime Minister himself had said on various occasions, saying, "Look, uh, we see that there's a food crisis in the world, and we'd like to be of help." But what we then saw was a kind of run on our wheat. Uh, a large part of it done by international traders. Uh, based out of Singapore and uh, I think to some degree maybe Dubai, uh, and uh, the result was actually the low-income countries, who many of whom were our traditional buyers, like our neighbours. Now what we saw was the low-income buyers were being squeezed out. The wheat was going, was actually being stocked for being traded. So in a way, our goodwill was being used for speculation. Mm -hmm. So we had to do something to to stop that uh, because it was also impacting us at home. Our prices were going up. If I were to take Europe collectively, which has been singularly silent on many things which were happening, for example, in Asia, you could ask why would anybody in Asia trust Europe on anything at all? Uh, so here's the take. Uh, I I don't think. Uh, I mean, first of all, I think you're mischaracterizing our position, uh, where we, where they have, for example, when Bucha happened, we condemned Bucha, and we actually asked for an investigation uh, into Bucha. Uh, in terms of what is happening with the Ukraine conflict, our position is very clearly that we favor uh, uh, an immediate cessation of hostilities. It's not that we've ignored it, unless you call. Phone calls to Putin and Zelensky as ignoring something. Uh, so first, I would urge you to get the factual position accurately. We have a difficult relationship with China. We're perfectly capable of managing it. If uh, I get global uh, understanding and support, obviously it is of help to me. But this idea that I 
do a transaction that I come in in one conflict because it will help me in conflict too. That's not how the world works. You know, somewhere Europe has to grow out of the mindset that Europe's problems are the world's problems, but the world's problems are not Europe's problems. That it's, if it is you, it's yours. If it is me, it's ours. I think that's something, uh, and I see, you know, reflections of that. I don't think we're sitting on the fence just because I don't agree with you. Uh, doesn't make me sitting on the fence. It means I'm sitting on my ground. And my ground is actually, uh, you know, if what are the big challenges of the world, okay? Big challenges of the world are climate change. I think I'm very critical to the solution. I can be an exemplar. I can be actually an arena for an enormous leapfrogging of green technologies. Look at terrorism. Look at the emergence of a world order. Uh, look at security. Uh, look at sustainable development goals. I mean, you take any and all of the big challenges of the world, some part of the answer either comes out of India, can be contributed to India. And again, I, I, I hate to say, you know, come, it's a bit like a broken record, but look, a lot of things are happening outside uh, Europe. Uh, we have, partly because of climate change, for a lot of humanitarian, natural disasters, humanitarian responses in our part of the world today. Uh, a lot of people look to us to help out. The days when they expected Europe to come, which Europe did at the 2004 tsunami. The difference today is nobody's even thinking of that anymore.